Good morning. Get you guys in the focus. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show, where we are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only the past crazy special. So what better place to be than here with me? Because if you want to learn to live past crazy, there's no better place to be than here with me. I hope you guys enjoyed the show on yesterday. Thank you guys so much for watching and for sharing. I greatly, greatly appreciate you guys. Oh, excuse me. Let me add my fearless co-host here. And if you've been sharing the videos, thank you. Tell everybody if they do not have Facebook, we are also on YouTube. So they can watch plenty of the Fearless Morning Show videos over there and get their feel. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Do I look blurry to you? Just a tad bit. Yes. I don't know. It must be my it must be my phone. I don't know. It's all right. How are you doing this morning? Doing good this morning. Doing good. We have um I don't have any extra news like I had yesterday. So we all good on that front. But I am super looking forward to the gubernatorial elections here in Georgia. Um mm -hmm. with Ryan Kemp and Stacey Abrams. Head going mm -hmm. head to head. This is going to be interesting. I think the entire world, let alone the country, the world will be watching this one, especially for mm -hmm. this will be the first time in history that a an African American female has the opportunity to become governor. Governor, yes, right. Yep. And I haven't seen any more, any prior to her. <laughs> I'm just saying. No. She will be right? the first. Yes, yeah, she will be the first. So that's going to be amazing um, to watch. And I know some people are like, oh, my God, you're such a nerd. Yes, I am, because I'm interested in what happens. And I'm excited you got to meet her at the event this um, March, the um, International mm -hmm. Women's Day event. So that's yep. something, you know, completely. I got my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. So this morning, um, as we go through and talk about the information, I wanted to share a quote with you. And this quote is Good from morning, Jim, everybody. Jim I'm sorry, Rowan. go ahead. Yes. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Sabrina. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, the quote this morning, guys, is that formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune, right? Wow. Yes, yes. Formal education will make you a living. So that means going to college, going to, you know, get those extra certifications, going to do whatever it is that you do after high school, that will help you to make a living. But self-education, doing things on your own to learn about, to improve, to move to your next, guys, that will make you a fortune. And I love the beauty of this because we hear the term all the time, lifelong learners, right? We're lifelong mm -hmm. learners. I know coming from the education space, that was one of the things that was reiterated over and over and over, be a lifelong learner. And I get mm -hmm. that and I understand that it's the same thing like a shower, y'all. You get up every morning and you take a shower, hopefully, right? Because that shower doesn't last over multiple days. You have to keep doing it. The same thing happens with education. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep going back. You have to educate yourself because things are going to change. Yes, some things stay the same because it's history. History can't change, <laughs> right? But some things do change and some things, uh, let's just be real, we're not privy to it. A lot of these things we were not taught in the traditional space of the education system. So we must continue to do this on an ongoing basis. And I know you say, well, Lynn, I did not come to hear that this morning, guys, but it's the truth. The truth will help you to get to your next. So make sure, let me repeat that quote one more time, y'all. It's very important. Formal education, will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. And that's by Jim Rohn. So let's get some self-education this morning, y'all. 
self-education this morning on how to find the money to invest, okay? And I posted and shared this morning that that's the topic that I'll be talking about because you need a yig, a mig, a wig, and a dig. And those of you who have been following me, you already know what that is. You don't even have to worry about it. You say, yeah, Lynn, I know what you're talking about. But guys, this morning for our financial confession and conversation, we have to look at, first of all, what type of investor we are, right? I'm Lynn Dem is America's number one financial rebound coach. And I will share with you and tell you that I have been through each of these different levels of investor for the most part, especially those at the beginning, because there's a cycle, there's a process to this thing, right? As I stated earlier, all of us are not at the table having these courageous conversations, not only with ourselves, with our family, with our spouses, with other people who may be doing these things in this space. So self-education this morning is going to help you make a fortune if and only if, if and only if you decide to act upon it. Okay, mm -hmm. so making sure that you do the work. So first of all, you need to know what type of investor you are, then you can make the necessary adjustments, right? Know where you are first, then you can decide where it is you need to go, what you need to do, what you need to change, but because you need a yig, a mig, a wig, and a dig. And you say, Lynn, what's a yig, a mig, a wig, and a dig? Give me a second, I'll give it to you. I will give it to you, but I need to make sure that you understand these seven levels of investor. And this is not something I made up, y'all. This is a teaching of Robert Kiyosaki. And you may be familiar with Robert Kiyosaki. He wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He wrote many other books in that series, but everything that comes along in this alignment. And this is a concept that he teaches people as far as what they need to do to get out of what he calls the rat race. How do you get to what it is that you want to do in your life? Dare I say you need a yig, a mig, a wig, and a dig. So what, how do you know what type of investor you are first and foremost? First, number one, that bottom level, guys, is called the non-existent investor. And you probably know someone who fits this mold. They have no investments. They have no savings. They tell themselves, I don't make enough money to invest right? So they don't even think about it. You don't even think about it. You don't do anything along those lines to think about investing. You just keep on doing what you're doing, spending everything that comes in because you don't feel, you don't think that you have the money to do this, right? And oftentimes, some of the things that get in our way it's simply our own thinking about a situation, our own internalized approach to getting things done. And we're just going to be real about it. So we have to recognize that first and foremost. Let me backtrack just for a second, guys. Your mind must be right to, or to even accept this conversation today. If you're not in the, of the right mindset, if you're not in the right frame of mind, if you're not even thinking along those lines, chances are you wouldn't even be on this broadcast. Let's just say that unless you just come to be a little bit nosy, but that's okay too, because we're going to help you get all the way right because self-education guys is what can make you a fortune. But what is important there is that first word self, right? There are some things that you have to do to get to your next. The uh, problem here for the non-existent investor guys is money management right? Not having a skill set needed to manage your money in the appropriate way. That's all that it is. The borrower is the next level of investor. <laughs> you play the game. You play the credit card game. You play the cash check. Uh, what is it called? The check cashing game, right? You go to the place, you get an advance on your, on your check <laughs> and you keep playing the game. And what happens to you guys, you keep borrowing over and over and over. You're transferring dirt debt from one place to another. You say, I got this game on lock because if I transfer it over here this month, then I can transfer it there the next month, and then I can get this thing done. See, I understand sometimes that's the only way to get through for the temporary. That's a temporary fix. Uh, please understand temporary. Yes, and you cannot. 
use that as a plan to get to your next. It simply won't work. It's been tried over and over and over yeah. and over again. Many have tried and failed. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. So we have to recognize that that type of investor, that borrower, that doesn't work. Then the next level of investor is the saver, y'all. And the saver, this this used to be the, the way to do things back in the 70s. The seven in the 70s, to be a saver was was one of those things that was, yes, you were doing right what you need to do. Because the interest rate that was paid on savings account was in double digits. And other opportunities to put your money in safe investment vehicles were available at that time in the 60s and 70s. However, times have changed. Things have changed. Situations have changed. The way that banks run business has changed. The debt of the country has changed. Therefore, as a result of that, the interest that you're getting in those safe investments, right, is now lower than ever. So you're putting your money in those accounts thinking, yes, I'm saving, but you're not even beating inflation. What you're doing is giving your money to the bank. The bank now, they're it's making 10 it. times on your money versus that 1% they're giving you, but inflation is going at 3%. So now what is happening? It completely changes the game for you and your family once you recognize, see guys, self-education, self-education is what's going to help you to get to your next. The fourth level of investor, guys, is the passive investor. That passive investor is that person who's aware of the need, they need to invest. You're invested in your 401k at work. You're investing in some type of IRA at work, you know, but the, the challenge here for that passive investor is you've gone in when HR told you to sign up for those retirement accounts, you simply check off the boxes because you didn't know what an index fund was. You didn't know what all those things were. You just checked the box and went ahead and said, okay, I'm going to contribute right? Whatever the company told me I need to contribute because it's a requirement of the job and you have absolutely yeah. no idea what you're invested in, what the commissions are that are being charged on your money. See, in many cases, guys, if you're not aware of those things and where your money's going, chances are a lot of those individuals who are managing those funds are making more money off of your money than you are. Yeah, they'll show you you're growing. You're growing a little. But dare I say, if you look at the other side of the paperwork, you <laughs> side, right, then you'll see that theirs is growing quicker than yours. See, guys, we have to be aware. So being that passive investor is a good place to start. But while you are a passive investor, you need to be getting the education. See, self-education, guys, is what moves you forward. And that's what's most important. And dare I say, guys, the, the level five is that automatic investor. See, the automatic investor understands. They've gotten the education that they need, and they understand this money game. They understand, and not only do they understand, they're involved. They're actively involved in the process. And there I say, this is where all of us need to get to the point where we are actively involved in the process of investing. Yeah, I get it. It's scary. Yeah, you think it's risky. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Yes, yes, yes. I get it. I get it. I get it. But excuses don't get results. Right? Excuses will not get you results. But what will get you results is getting the education. See, self-education will help you to be able to make better decisions. Yes, things are risky in investing. And, and, and guys, it wouldn't be an opportunity if, we're, if there were no risk involved. Let's just be clear about that. But when you educate yourself so that you can now protect your investment portfolio, it completely changes the, your position. It completely changes the opportunities that are now placed before you once you get that, that in your place, right? Get it in your face. So how do you now find the money to invest? And I'm sure that's what you've come here for. The number one thing that you guys got to do 
that you must do, that you have to do, that is the non-negotiable, however you want to say it, is guys, you have to know where you are first before you can get started. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Where are your assets? Where are your liability liabilities, right? Knowing those amounts. Your assets minus your liabilities gives you your net worth. Once you know your assets and your liabilities and what's coming in and what's going out every month, guys, you need to take care. You need to handle that budget and you must pay off that bad debt. You must pay off your bad debt because there's no way that you're going to find money to invest if you have all of these things lingering over your head, all of these unnecessary items that we have purchased. But you see, guys, we are great consumers. We are great consumers. And our community <laughs> purchases things in the trillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And see, the challenge on that, guys, I was listening to the uh, Black CEO morning show the, uh, yesterday. And the challenge with that is they recognize the fact that the Black dollar doesn't stay in our community long because we like to consume. And they said that the white man recognized that fact that there's a trillion dollar industry over there in the black community. This is how we're trillions of dollars, not a trillion, trillions of dollars over there in that community that we got to go get. And they, they're relentless at going and getting it. Mm -hmm. See, we have to recognize, guys, that there are things that we need to do differently. We have to take ownership of that situation. And I get it. Sometimes you'll say, girl, it's so difficult. It's so hard to work with black people. It's so hard to buy from, from the black people. It's difficult. I've had this experience. I hear you. I had those experiences as well. But we cannot continue to rely on that excuse. Excuses don't get results. So what are the things that you're going to do differently, guys? See, we have to manage this for ourselves. And we have to figure out what it is that we need to do so that we can find the money that we can invest. When we start investing, we make our money, keep our money, and grow our money. Dare I say we make our money, keep our money in our community, grow our money in our communities. Everybody else does it. Amen. Everybody else does it, then why do we mm -hmm. not succeed in this area? Why yeah, but they have really? more faith in us than we do. Girl, <laughs> girl, you hey, be right <laughs> don't they? They have faith in the fact that they know that we are going to buy those shoes, they have faith in the fact that they know we're going to buy those cars, they have faith in the fact that they know we're going to buy those purses, they have faith in the fact that they know we're going to buy. It's about keeping up with the Joneses, right? Didn't I tell you the other day the Joneses are broke? They understand the power of the dollar, Lynn, and, and we're yes. not understanding the power of our dollar. Our exactly. dollar, regardless if you're living paycheck to paycheck and going that check writing place, it still has power because you are keeping that check writing place open. And then when you get to understand the power of your money, is you right. as an individual, then you're going to be able to make some changes. I'm Absolutely. sorry. No, that's the truth. <laughs> Girl, that is the truth. You better speak on it because I'm going to sit back and let you talk because it oftentimes this is a hard, this is a tough conversation for many to have. And they say, well, you don't know my story. And, and I don't have to know your story, right? I don't have to dig down into the details. But what I do recognize is there is something that we can all do differently. We try to spend, I saw the best post yesterday. It says, stop spending your money trying to live somebody else's life. <laughs> Amen. I like, yes. I wish I could share that with everybody. Put it in neon lights. Put it everywhere. Stop spending your money trying to live somebody else's life and get your stuff together. See, God, this is a hard conversation to hear this morning. But that's the only way we're going to be able to find the money that we need to invest. And then, guys, this is a temporary situation. You do things this way for a short time. Dare I say you're going to start to see the improvements over time. Then you can go back and do that stuff that you were doing before. And you don't have to worry about, right, 
coming up short. You don't have to worry about all the other things that can potentially impact you in your finances on a regular basis. That's why you need those goals. You need a yig, a mig, a wig, and a dig. What's that, y'all? I start with the end in mind. What is the end goal that you want? Once you have that end, right? You need a yig, that's your yearly investing goal. A mig, your monthly investing goal. A wig, your weekly investing goal. And a dig, your daily investing goal. But dare I say, some of us got to go back and, and get out of debt. Yeah. So you need a, what is that? Uh, a YDG. <laughs> a yearly debt goal. A monthly debt goal. A weekly yeah. debt goal. A daily debt goal. So you can get out of it. That's how you find your money, guys, to start investing. So you got to be real with yourself. You got to face the fact because what? Nothing gets better until you admit that something's wrong. Something's wrong in your money, guys, and you got to admit that. Mm -hmm. That's step that number one. Right. Something's wrong. You must admit that. You must admit that you're using your money to live somebody else's life when you can change things up and define what life is for you. But we get caught up in the game. We get caught up in the, in the looking like, right? We got it going on. We get caught up, guys, for the wrong reasons. That's why I'm America's number one financial rebound coach, because I understand that mentality. I understand going through that process. I've been there. I've done that. I own the T-shirts. Right? <laughs> the book bags yes. and all, honey. Yes. yes. We have to recognize, guys, that's how you find the money to start investing, is that you recognize that you have to do something differently. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts. And you feel that you can't, I can't, I can't do this. We'll say, oh my gosh, I can't live without my cell phones. What did you do in the 80s before you had a cell phone? Girl, run to the house and check your answer machine. Thank you. Right? And if you missed the call and they didn't have caller ID, you'll be like, well, dang. <laughs> right? Star 69, honey. What's your friend? Remember that? <laughs> right? Exactly. So guys, we lived without these things at one point or another, if you were a certain age, right? You right. lived without those things. You live without a remote because you had to get up and change the TV with your hand back in the day, <laughs> right? We've done that. So there's a lot of, and, and I'm, I'm being funny, I'm being cute right in this moment, but we have to recognize and understand, guys, that some of these things that we think we must have, right? Are creature comforts, but until we recognize that there are things that we can do that are going to push us to our next, guys, this is how you find the money that you need to invest. You have to be mm -hmm. honest with yourself. And until you recognize, nothing is going to get better until you admit that something is wrong. Find out what's wrong in your finances. Go through the budget toolkit. I created a budget toolkit for you. You can go on there and sign up for it for free. And you say, well, Leah, how do you get it? You go to my website, DemonsEnterprise.com. You scroll down to the bottom of the page. You join our community. You get that as a free gift. Or you can go on my site and buy it. It's up to you. I'm telling you, that is there for free. Or you can go there and buy it. But you must do the work. And remember, guys, this is a temporary situation. Because it doesn't have to be like this all the time. Once you recognize, get a plan, become consistent, and keep pushing, then you start seeing that you are stacking your coins, as they say. You're stacking the bills, as they say. You're getting to your next. Mm -hmm. But until you do something different, until you do something different, you're going to stay the same. So guys, I'm inviting you. I have a free seven-day course as well. Not only is there a budget toolkit, and this some, and I'm going to tell you guys, it's, it's a little bit painful for some to actually look at where they are. I know. Child, it's a whole lot painful. Don't be talking about this a little bit. 
It darn near make a grown person cry. <laughs> the beauty of it once you know where you are then you know what you need to do to get out of it right mm -hmm. yes yep. painful it's a little bit painful i think but it's all about your mindset when you go in if you go in like the little what the little engine that could i think i can i think i can i think i can and then that became i know i can i know i can and before he knew he knew that he was at the top of the mountain right he was already mm -hmm. at the top See, guys, if you get your mindset right, you know that you can. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. From the start, mm -hmm. from the jump, whether you That's think me. that you can do this or not, you are right. So ultimately, it depends on you. And you say, well, Lynn, why are you yelling at the phone? Guys, I'm so, I'm overpassionate about this situation and helping people to get to their next. And until we see this, and you got to see this before you see it. You hear that all the time, right? You got to see it before you see it. You got to see your family, you know, living out this financial legacy. You got to see this. And then, guys, not only do you see it by yourself, you have these conversations with your family. You get around the table. You bring everybody to the table and you have this conversation because chances are they've been doing the same things wrong that you've been doing because they've been modeling our actions. Our kids model what we do. They model us. And I go around talking about investing. Guess what my baby does, y'all? He goes around and he talks about investing. He may not have all of the lingo down but he knows enough to articulate well enough. And people say, wow, that kid over there talking about investing? Yes, he is. Because he's modeling what he sees at home. But dare I say, if he was not seeing that at home, what would he be modeling? Would he be out here modeling what? Somebody out here twerking? I mean, he ain't going to see that up in here. But anyway, whatever happened is in your house, that's what the kids are modeling. So bring them to the table and have this conversation with them. Help them to start off on a different foot. Help them to build financial confidence. Help them to find money to invest now. Every time, guys, they get all of these things. Kids are so privileged these days, right? Yes, and I hate yeah. to get on a tangent about the children, but this is very important. If we're going to change this conversation for our communities, if we're going to change the way that we're doing things in our communities, we must, it is a non-negotiable, <clears throat> we must have these types of conversations. Yeah, it's going to be tough in the beginning, but once it becomes the norm, it becomes a habit. And I posted last night, I was watching uh, 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 something, what was it called? Next Chance or Last Chance University. Mm -hmm. Last Chance University. And the coach of the team basically told them, he said, guys, winning is a habit, but unfortunately, so is losing. <laughs> winning is a habit, unfortunately, so is losing. So what are the habits that you're developing within your household? What are the habits that you've developed as an adult that need to be changed? What are the habits that you are now teaching your children that's going to help them to either win or to lose in this game called life? Mm -hmm. See, guys, that's the type of conversations that we need to be having around the table. Not what's the name of the new Nikes or the Jordans that's coming out next week and standing in line with all these hours waiting for that. <laughs> and I hate to keep going back to that, but that's prevalent. We see it. It happens all too often. So how do you find the money that you need to invest, guys? You got to get into your numbers. Get into your numbers. Get the budget toolkit so that you can start getting on the page and know exactly where you are. Like I said, if you don't know where you are, it's like pulling out a map. Okay? Pull out a map. We're in Beijing, China. If I don't have a clue as to where I am on this map, I can't read this map. I see the map. All I see is lines and scribble. And you know their language looks like little caricatures to me, right? If you see that on the map and you don't have a clue where you are, how in the heck do you go? How, how in the heck do you think you're gonna get anywhere, right? How do you think you're going to get anywhere? You get where you need to go by knowing where you are. 
And that's why knowing your net worth is very important. And you don't have to go through and officially calculate your net worth right now. But what you do need to do, and I implore you that you do this because this helps you to get to your next, is to go through the budget toolkit. Yes, it's a little painful. Because reality, in many cases, some of us, we try to live in this fairy tale land. We try to live in this space, like we said earlier, living our lives with our money, right? Living somebody else's life with our money. Trying to look like somebody else just because they posted or said they are doing this or they got this or they got that. Guys, that stuff means absolutely nothing when you don't have goals. That's why you need yigs, migs, wigs, and digs. But you got to figure that thing out first. You have to find the money to invest. And that's where you start finding your money. That's where you start. So, guys, if you're ready to get started, you need the budget toolkit. You can get that. If you're ready to get started, I have a seven-day prep to investing course. It builds your foundation. Get that solid financial foundation that you need so that you can invest with confidence. Guys, I do. I uh, went over a little bit this morning, but I'm Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yeah, I said it, America's number one. I see my co-host posted the YouTube channel, so I must have been talking an awful lot this morning. Um, <laughs> we at seven. It's you all right. We at seven forty-seven, so we doing good. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. So, guys, yes, if you are ready to have that conversation, go over and schedule time to talk to me so you can get started because it makes absolutely no sense for us to keep doing these same things over and over. You just need to have a conversation with somebody that's going to help push you, and I'm here to help push you to get to your next. It's not about me, and it's not about you, really, guys, but it's about our community. How do we come up together together? Go in there, bit.ly slash talk to Lynn. Schedule time to talk to me so you can help get you right. Just like they say on the planes, you have to fix your oxygen mask first before you can help somebody else. Let's get you right so we can get out here and help everybody else. Because I can't do this by myself. JoJo can't do it by herself. And I'm going to stop talking because I just saw that side I come from JoJo. I'm Lynn Dimmons. I ain't the girl scratching my darn face. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to scratch my back without grabbing the scissors because <laughs> normally I grab the scissors and somebody knows that's like why did why are you using scissors I was like my back and I'm short so I can't reach it all the way oh okay I thought you were giving me the side off no honey I'm trying to I'm trying to bend over and scratch over here I got something else going on <laughs> All right, well, you handle that, but y'all, I'm Lynn Dimmons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yes, I said it, America's number one. Don't forget to go over, sign up for the course, bit.ly slash seven day prep investing. It's free, y'all. And if you're ready to invest, I have a course that's starting on Thursday, August 2nd at 8 p.m. Get registered, bit.ly slash the investing blueprint. If you need the help to get started, you say, Lynn, it's risky. I don't want to lose money. I don't know where to start. I got you. Join the class. bit.ly slash investing blueprint. All right, guys. Over to you, Miss JoJo. And I did post all of those links. Um, so if you guys um, need any of Lynn's information, I posted the links. So everything from her website to the seven-day prep to um, scheduling time to talk with Lynn. So make sure that you are up with getting your money together. Um, so today, guys, the fearless thought for the day is, I know er earlier this week I talked about you don't have time, you know, you don't have a lot of time to do what you need to do. Today, I want to talk about how you need to be mindful of your time. And <clears throat> we always say, I told you, you don't have time. But think about this. What is time forcing you to do? Because a lot of times we say, I don't, I don't have time to look at my money. I don't have time to be dealing with crazy people. I just don't have time to do this. But in all actuality, when you don't pay attention to your time, it is actually taken from you. So, for example, let's say you don't have time to park here to find to drive around the mall to find a parking space, right? So you want to park in a loading dock, right? So, because I'm just going to be in there for five minutes. Well, you go in the mall... And next thing you know, it's three hours later and you come out, 
and you got a boot on your car. So because you did not take the time to find a parking space, now time has forced you to pay money you didn't have for action you decided to take. Right. So apply that. You can apply that concept to anything. What is you? What is the concept of you not taking time to handle, forcing you to do in your life? You not taking time to address that crazy, crazy relationship. What is it forcing you to do on the back end? Is it forcing you to always have to come up with a lie? Because people are always asking you questions. Well, I, I ran into the wall. Girl, I had every lie in the world when I got to work as the why I had black eyes, bruises, fingerprints on my neck, fingerprints. It's summertime and I got on long sleeve turtleneck. And it is exhausting coming up with those lies. So when you don't take the time to address your crazy, it is forcing you to come up with something else. And that is taking away more time that you don't have. It is costing you time and money when you do not address the crazy in the beginning. Right. So I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. I'm not going to even say it's going to be fun. What I will tell you is that you will have way more time to do the things you want to do as opposed to being reactive and doing the things you have to do because your time has been taken away from you. You actually... When you don't address the crazy in your life, right. you are actually limiting yourself of what you can and cannot do. So when I was married to crazy, I limited myself to everything that only he wanted me to do. And for two years, I lived in his world, in his bubble, his rules, his everything. I had no other options of living my own life. And then when I got out of it and I still refused to address the crazy in my life, then I'm still being pro reactive to what he had already set up for me. So then I would say, oh, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. But at the back end, time was surely making, reminding me, oh, you don't want to pay me any attention. So now you're going to be forced. I'm going to take this away from you. It's taking your peace of mind. It's taking your money. It's taking your time away from your children. Because when you stop and think about it, and this is <clears throat> a real conversation I had to have with myself, what was I giving my girls? Because I was so focused on crazy, because I didn't have time to sit down and look at what was causing my crazy. Because, right. you know, I'm at the extreme. I just got to get day to day. So time then was like, oh, okay, well, we're going to take it from your kids. So then my children suffered because I thought I didn't have time to handle crazy. So they go hand in hand. So what is time forcing you to do? What is it making you pay for? Because you're paying a price very dearly, whether you want to admit it or not. You're paying the price of not sleeping, not eating right, your health being bad, you tiptoeing. Your mindset, when you live in crazy, understand that your mindset is so totally different than other people. You normal logic doesn't make sense to you right it, it, it makes no sense to you because you're so caught up in all i know i have time to do is handle this crazy right here i don't have time to stop it i don't have time to address it because i'm living in it and mo normal people are looking at us like you you for real crazy like you you enjoying your crazy journey right but right yeah because and then i see some people that are so comfortable in their crazy and they are unaware that time, they say, I don't have time, or they think they have time when they really don't. They are so unaware because they have gotten so caught up and custom to the circle of the crazy and the cycles of it. It's just another, well, I know what this is. I know what's going, about to happen now. And you're always living in chaos. And chaos and crazy is still in your time. And my friend, you don't have the time. And unfortunately... If you don't address the crazy in your life, in your finances, in your relationships, with your friendships, with your marriages, with whatever, if you don't, then you're going to realize time was taken from you and you've been living your whole life. What's the word I want to use? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> you've been living your whole life crazy, crazy because you're not taking the time to handle your business. There was no better word than that. Because you're not taking the time. So you don't you don't have the time to continue to waste time because you're wasting it. Because crazy will have you sitting at home, vegging out on TV for hours on end because that's the only way you can dull the pain from the chaos 
of what you're living through. Chaos will have you getting in the car, driving in circles because you don't want to go home because crazy lives there because you don't want to take the time to deal with the crazy at your home. You stay out. So then you wasting gas, time, money away from your family, peace of mind, can't sleep yes. to come home and crazy meets you at the door <clears throat> and it reminds you, oh, you thought you was getting away from me. Well, you got some time to deal with crazy again exactly. tonight. So guys, be, I want you to be mindful. It's hump day Wednesday. Be mindful of your time. What are you doing with it? And what is time forcing you not to address or what is it forcing you? Because you're paying for it. One way or another, you're paying for it. If, if you don't pay attention to your money, if you don't take the time to address your money, you're paying for it because our bank accounts are negative. And you're paying for it because you always have to check cash in place. You're paying for it because you always have to tell your kids you don't have no money. You're paying for it working three jobs and you still don't have any money. Right. You paying for that time, honey, one way or another. You paying for it with your relationships because you got the same man over and over again. Or you saying, I value myself, but then you out here living not your best life, not valuing yourself. But you say that to everybody because, you know, we can talk better than we can act sometimes. So just be mindful of what time is taken from you today. Be mindful of your time. Be It is precious. What are you spending your time on? When you got up this morning, what was the first thing you did? Were you thankful or did you complain? When you go on your way to work, are you worrying about work? You stressed out about work? What is it forcing you not to do? I know sometimes I ask some crazy questions, but these, they will make you think because you think you have time when you don't, and it is truly taking something away from you. All right, guys, that is it for the Fearless Morning Show. I thank you guys so much for joining. Please make sure you share the video um, because somebody may be living in crazy and Lord knows they need all the help they can get because you be thinking, I know somebody that is crazy <laughs> to this day. And they need just a little pep and they step right. a little help. Just a little over here to the Fearless Morning Show. Lynn and I will help them out. Lynn already talked about the YouTube channel. So, guys, go over there and watch it. All the um, shows are by topic. So you can pick a topic and share it with somebody. Make sure you subscribe. It. But please make sure you share the video and comment. And then let us know if there's anything you want us to cover or talk about. And we will be glad to do that for you. Um, don't forget to join the Be Fearless journey. Um, Lynn, I read this, something this morning about, um, oh no, that was the same thing. I didn't mean to post that. Uh, about this girl and she was talking about her fear of jumping out of a plane. <laughs> and I was like, I don't need to hear, um, I don't need to hear that about nobody being scared of jumping out no plane because I'm not jumping out no plane. But I had to read the article and it made sense. But we working on So if you guys want to join me on this Be Fearless journey as I work my way up to jumping out of a plane, I don't know if it'll happen this year, but we'll pray about it. How about that? But I'm definitely doing the roller coaster. I'm definitely doing the zip line. So guys, make sure you come out. And it's all about finding what you enjoy. Yesterday, Lynn, I found my happy place. I posted it last night before I fell asleep because I was exhausted. My happy place. It is a place where people go and discuss literature and books. When I tell you I was like a little kid and all it was was tables and chairs filled with books. And to get in, you only had to bring a book. Girl, what? And you could take a book if you wanted to. And people, so you sit at the table and the guy, you know, he reads a passage first and he talks about it. But at your table, you can discuss the books you bought or any literature that you're reading and poetry. And then they have a reading time where you can sign up and come up and read stuff. When I tell you I was in hog heaven and when he said it was over at nine o'clock, I was like, what? I just got here at seven. Why is it over with at nine? <laughs> <laughs> he looking at me like, oh, ma'am, you got to go home. But I, I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And that's what it's all about, taking time in the midst of all your crazy to figure out or find out what it is that you like and that you love to do. So that was my happy place on yesterday. So I'm thinking about starting a book club because that's something I've always wanted to do because y'all know I'm a nerd. Look, these sit on my desk all the time. 
So y'all know I'm a nerd at heart. But I'm thinking about starting a book club. If anybody's interested, let me know, because I don't want to do this, and ain't nobody going to come over here and read and um, be all into it like me, because I'm into it for real. But let me know. All right, guys, I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. Lynn, anything else before we close out the show? Guys, I just want to share, as always, thank you. We know your time is your most precious commodity, and you decided to share that with us today, and we thank you for that. You can't get those minutes back, so we appreciate you. Hope you take action. Get those digs, migs, migs, and digs. All right. Uh, again, thank you for joining us for the Fearless Morning Show. We're here every morning, Monday through Friday, 7.15 a.m. That's right. We'll be here bright and early. All right, guys. Um, I hope you have an amazing Wednesday, and we'll see you here bright and early in the morning. Have a good one. Signing off.